Again, for those of you who are newer to the stream, may not be familiar, we do donation decks every Thursday. <coughs> And this is a uh, donation deck that was submitted to me, and we are playing some Jund. Now, I don't really... There's really no tagline after Jund. It's kind of just Jund. Uh, this is very... Basically, the, the concept of this deck is we are playing... A lot of the Recto, like the cards that you see in Rakdos midrange, like Fatal Push, Kroxa, Blood Tithe Harvester, Coligan's Command, Fable... But we're pairing that with green so we can kind of jump the mana curve because traditionally Rakdos has a, you know, a pretty bad mana curve and just kind of gets clunked up on a bunch of three drops. So we're trying to fix that by playing some mana dorks. Uh, now, granted, we're also adding more three drops. Maybe that's kind of a bad idea, but, you know, still got a lot of the like Fatal Push, Strangle. We're playing with Branch Walker and Jade Light Ranger, and the reason for that is because we're playing four Obnixilis, and those cards are both like stuff that cards that replace themselves that are good things to sacrifice to Obnixilis. So, yeah, this deck looks cool. I like the concept. Uh, we'll have to see if the mana works out and if the uh, curve doesn't shoot us in the foot. And then in the sideboard, we got a cool little sideboard plan against Moderate, too, with some Wild Growth Walkers. So we'll see if that kind of comes to fruition. Uh, you know, obviously you can swap Thoughtseize for Fatal Push when matchups that where, where matchups where Fatal Push is bad. So, yeah, pretty cool deck, and uh, I am excited to see how this one goes. <laughs> Jund is love, Jund is life, yeah. Thoughts on Pioneer, Bant Spirits. I think Bant Spirits is good. I don't know if I like it more than Mono Blue Spirits, though. Ugh. One lander, huh? Surely they won't kill my Gilded Goose on turn one. I gotta pull this. <clears throat> there we go. This is what I'm talking about. This hand looks gas. I think I'm gonna keep the third land because I assume my elf is dying. So I'm gonna put back the second harvester. This hand looks sick, though. The flavor is it doesn't want to be used by students for their class, I assume. Well, wouldn't it be called, like, unwilling student rather than unwilling ingredient? <laughs> you know? Like, I figured if it's called, if the card has ingredient in the name, then I figured it would be, like, you know, part of a, part of the food theme, but I don't know. <clears throat> that could be a potion ingredient? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, I guess that makes sense then. Because if, like, students, if it's, like, a science class and students are doing potion and stuff, yada yada. Doesn't want to be part of the potion. I guess I could see it. I guess. To turn me into a dude, I got better. Nice. <laughs> now the chat's just going to be all new jokes for the rest of the day. Fable Passage for Basic Forest. wonder what that's about. Whoa. What the hell? It's like Jeskai Ascendancy? No, they wouldn't play Basic Forest in Jeskai Ascendancy. Uh, okay, let's start by drawing a card. Uh, so I can do it this way. Okay. Attack for four. Chat, I'm scared. Paradise Druid usually does not mean good things. <clears throat> what kind of nonsense is this? What, our deck or our opponent's deck? <laughs> they have a collected company, perhaps? Oh, I'm making a food. You better believe I'm making a food. Okay, that's a really good draw step. Question is, do I attack with Harvester first? Probably. Yeah, I think attack is fine. And then I have six mana, so I can actually play K-Command and Obnixilis, right? Uh, do I go down tick, down tick? I think I go down tick, down tick. What if I just sack the Elf, actually? Because I kind of want to keep the 3-2 in play. Yeah, let's actually sack the Elf. I kind of want to keep the 3-2. Ever brewed or thought about brewing Obosh and Pioneer? I actually played recently. There's actually a video on YouTube about this. There is an there was an Obosh Rakdos deck that I played. And I want to say, I think we 4-1 with it. It actually felt not that bad. But yeah, it was like Obosh. Um, we were playing with like the, the one drops that come back. Glimmer of Genius. Okay. After the Glimmer resolves, I'm going to kill the Druid and make them discard. Oh, are they just playing, um, like, Aetherworks Marvel or something? I don't know. Discard a card, two damage. But yeah, going back to the, uh, the Rakdos talk. 
I wonder if I can pull up the deck list. I probably can, right? If I go, I'll probably put it up on the YouTube. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know what they're playing. <laughs> I'm a little scared. They discarded Valakut Awakening. I kind of feel like, yeah, okay, it's definitely a, uh, it's definitely a, um, Aetherworks Marvel deck. For sure. Right? Has to be. Rectus Sack. Where'd it go? Rectus Sack. Somewhere on my YouTube page, you can probably find it. You may have to go back a couple of pages, but somewhere on the YouTube page, there is a Rakdos Obosh deck, I promise you. All right, plus twice. Are they trying to out-nonsense us? There's no way. Surely they can't out-nonsense the nonsense. Should have plus the other odd, but I'll do it anyways. It's fine. Couldn't need to make the existing red-black mid-deck into an Obosh. Already have a bunch of threes, and Bonecrusher is fake too. Um, I think the even cards in the Obosh deck are incredibly important, like Kalidus, Chandra, Kroxa, and Blood Tithe Harvester are very important in the Rakdos midrange deck, to the point where I think if you're playing with Obosh Rakdos, they discard an Ugin, you kind of have to be like a little more aggressively slanted. Let me see if I can find that Obosh deck. I think I probably still have it. Uh... Where is it? Rakdos Aggro? Ah, yes, this is what it was. So basically, we were playing with, like, Bloodsoak Champion, Dreadwander, Ebon Legion, Kumano, Rotting Regisaur, Bonecrusher, Opnixilis, and I'm going to be honest with you, I, I only played one league with this deck, but it felt really nice. This was a sweet deck. All right, they have five energy. Whirler Virtuoso. So, trigger on the stack. I'm gonna sack food. Oh, I should have sacked food for mana with the goose. Actually, no, this is better, right? So, they can only make one token. <clears throat> Champ would be good in the Esper list. What, Bloodsoak Champion? In the Esper Hollow One deck, maybe. Uh, I think I'm just gonna keep going upstairs. There's like a small chance that I can maybe survive survive a, um, a spin-off Marvel. They kept a card in hand, so their last card is probably Marvel. It's gotta be Marvel, right? But they only have five energies, so... What deck was that? It was the, the Rakdos Obosh deck. You don't remember when we played that? It was like Ob, Regisaur, and then just all, like, Rakdos aggressive one-drops with Thoughtseize push. This deck was sweet. I like that deck a lot. Mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm -mm. And we did get to leave we did we did get to live the dream where we got to play a rotting regisaur and sack it to an obnix. That shit is nice. Oh no. That's not good. That's not good. So if they hit like Aetherworks Marvel plus something that generates energy. Man, ultimatum with Marvel's kinda sick. Because it finds the Marvel, it is also a good payoff for the Marvel, right? Oh, no big deal. <laughs> Just an Emrakul and a Lomog. Uh, but I can actually still kill them, right? Oh, no, they have two cards in hand. Shit. I was going to say they only had one card in hand, but now they have two cards in hand. So we need to draw a second Obnixilus to kill them, right? Yeah, second Ob kills them. Beetle push does not do it. Can we survive a hit? Actually, we can, right? We can survive a hit, I think. <laughs> I think we can survive a hit. The question is, do I go up with both, or do I go down? This is, what, 23, 26, 28 damage. I'm gaining 4 life if I go up twice, plus I have blockers. I think I just go up twice, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go up twice. I was thinking if I wanted more blockers off the Opnix list, but... I think they have to discard both cards if I go up twice, which means they have nothing left. I guess they have tokens off Virtuoso, but they kept a card in hand. It's so greedy. <sighs> I could put them to one. <laughs> one is not zero, though. All right, I guess we just pass. All right, go. Fuck, man. Urgh. That last card in hand has to be the Stone Cold Nuts to keep it at two life. What card would they possibly keep here? It has to be Ugin, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, I don't even die to Ugin though. I can still I can still beat them if they have Ugin. Sure. Okay, hope they miss. 
You can attack if they take it, push my guy. If they take it, push my guy. Well, they're just going to block, right? Why would they take it? Taking it's, this, taking it's just infinitely worse than blocking. Because they take one either way. But I guess maybe I could have attacked and see if they maybe fucked up and blocked, but... Or fucked up and didn't block, I should say. Oh fuck. Now they're at five. Okay. Oh, the puzzle dot's really annoying. They're actually effectively at eight. <coughs> yeah, puzzle dot's probably going to be impossible to beat. Unless they, for some reason... Eh, never mind. Uh, now they're at eight. Man, so close this game. So, so close this game. Got them to two. So we're playing against so many weird decks today. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice change of pace, you know? No mono green. I've played against this. I've played against blue-black control. Uh, Niv, which I guess is like a somewhat popular deck. I just played against some weird decks today. It's a nice change of pace. Attack me for 23. All right, no blocks. Yeah, just, just take it. Just easily take it. Oh, no, they killed the ob. Right, okay. They didn't kill this ob, though. It's weird. Do I have any outs? I don't think so. I can't imagine I have outs here. All right, all right, you win. Man, tough one. I'm definitely going to cut push for Thoughtseize, because they have carried it and... Um, Paradise Druid, which push does not touch. Probably want to bring in Duress. Don't think I want Alpine Moon. Don't think I want Dreadboard. Don't think I want Hearse. So we'll just trim on, I guess, probably a Strangle. Sure. Yeah, this is fine. Good with that. <coughs> yeah, it's been a fun day today. There's been, you know, like I said, not a ton of, uh, not a ton of mono, like basically no mono green. Phoenix a couple of times. But yeah, it's just been a good day. No Rakdos mid-range. A lot of a lot of interesting and sweet decks today, which I like. Pioneer is just such a great format. I, I love this format so much. I love our opponent's deck, though. Genesis Ultimatum, both as a card that finds Marvel and also is a good hit off of Marvel. It's really, really good. Good deck building. Meanwhile, all I play is Black Red and Monogreed and my Q is going 3-2 over and over again. I mean, yeah, that, there's going to be some of those. Like last night, for example, we played against Monogreed like five times. So, like, you're going to have those days, but as long as you can dodge mono green for the most part, like, as long as you're not playing against it, you know, five out of six rounds or whatever, you you, you get my point. Uh, well, the classic Rakdos problem of all three drops, I can't imagine I can keep this hand. Uh, this is... I don't really think it's better, but I think it's keepable. It does have one drop into... It does have Thoughties into Harvester, so... Uh, I think I just take the Marvel. Puzzle Knot's kind of annoying, though. Uh, okay, so we can go... Ah, god, this is super awkward. Because, what if I just didn't play the Harvester? And I tried to play Jade Light on three? Because if I go Crag Crown Harvester, I can't play the Jade Light, but I guess I can just play Charm. Yeah, it's probably fine. I gotta play, I gotta try and pressure them. Again, if we had... Uh, Copperline Gorge, this would be a lot better, but we don't have Copperline Gorge. Wizards, if you're listening, give us Copperline Gorge, I beg. I literally beg. Give us Copperline Gorge. Guess I probably just ob them now. Just make some tokens. Not a bad turn. <coughs> I had a perfect meta snapshot league was Phoenix, Black, Red, Red, White, Mono, Green, and Blue, White. Yeah, see, that's a that's a cool league. You know, playing against one of all the good decks once. No repeats. That feels pretty good when you have those leagues. So they have these three cards and two unknowns. You can attack first. Hmm. It's kind of awkward. So this is until, until your next end step. So I kind of don't want to do that. I could loot the Jade Light Ranger. Let's plus the ops first. Let's see what they do. They took two. Let me take two again. Yeah, what if I just loot the Jade Light? I'm trying to find a second Thoughtseize or a Duress. 
kind of like that. Because I feel like I kind of... Ooh, do I get greedy? I feel like I kind of have to cast Thoughtsies in case they have another Marvel. I'm not, I'm not going to get greedy. I'm just going to cast Thoughtsies. No shot I get greedy here. No shot I get greedy. Yeah, get out of here. Get out of here. All right, don't... They're gonna, surely they won't draw a third one. Surely they won't... Oh my God, dude, come on! How is that real? How is this real, dude? <laughs> How is this real? I cast two fucking thought seizes and you still draw it. Oh my god, dude. What? Are you fucking kidding me? That's unreasonable. I just I I can't even, man. I just I literally can't. It's so just that's so depressing. That's so depressing. That's like the most ridiculous scenario of all time. That's actually nuts. I I'm I am a person. I'm sorry, chat, but I am a human being that cannot handle thoughts using the card the same card twice and your opponent still drawing the same card. I can't handle that. That's just that's just not that's not me. It's just not me. I'll play elf here, I think. I think that's fine. <clears throat> Goblin Shrine? What does Goblin Shrine mean? Esper Grease Fang? Looks like Esper Grease Fang. Okay, discard Hollow Fountain. Definitely just going to slam Fable here. Wow, that's a good draw, too. I'm going to lead with Fable, though. I think I like Fable first. Maybe it's better to play Jade Light, because we can potentially put more pressure on them, but, like... This is, means that we're, likely to, we're more likely to hit our land drops, and we can make mana with the Shaman token. So we can, like, if we hit a land drop, we can go attack, you know, play land, attack, and then maybe double spell. Selfless Spirit. <laughs> Fatal Push, the 2-2. Two -two. Sure. Okay. I think I'm going to get rid of... Branch Walker, Gilded Goose. Okay. Uh, unfortunate that I can't Branch Walker and Ob because they killed the token. Hmm. I can just go Ob plus Elf. The problem, the really really awkward part about playing Ob here is what if they just have a Parhelion in hand, and I uptick, and they just discard Parhelion. I think I might just go Jade Light Elf. Yeah, I'm just going to go Jade Light Elf, I think. I really don't want them playing Discarding Parkelion off the ob. <clears throat> Is that one good? Hmm. It's not terrible, but I think we can do better. I really want to find Coligan's Command. Once I find Coligan's Command, I'm like pretty safe to just activate the Obnixilis, because then I don't really mind if they discard Parhelion, but it's good with Fable, but so is Jade Light, right? When do Asuka's Chariots to copy op tokens? Did you know that that's, that's actually bugged on Magic Online and it doesn't work? <laughs> it's been bugged since uh, since Fable came out and they still haven't fixed it. Or since Op came out, excuse me. Okay, well, now the Parhelion's in the graveyard, so I'll just play the Op now, probably. Alright, well, I just don't have it, so. Easy. Fiend Artisan. Thankfully, it's only a 3-3, so I can just strangle it. <coughs> Okay, so let's go strangle this thing. Question is, do I offer the Jade Light for informant trade? I don't think so. So let's go play Branch Walker. And then I can sack the Branch Walker to the Obnixilis. So we go play Stomping Ground. This is a really nice turn. And then I go down tick plus up tick. <laughs> They conceded. Cool. That was a sweet game. All right, we get to bring in Hearse. Uh, Dreadborn, no good. Walker, no good. Moon, no good. Okay, the question that we have to ask ourselves is how easily can we trigger Revolt for Fatal Push on Grease Fang? <clears throat> not that easily. We have Gilded Goose, Blood Token, Fable Token. Actually, it's not that bad. I think Strangle sucks because, again, Sorcery Speed... Like, strangling a, strangling a Grease Fang after they already got a trigger, not really where you want to be. 
I tend to not like Kroxa in these matchups, because, again, it just lets them discard the, the Parhelion from hand. And I think we can probably shave an Ob. Maybe shave two Obs to play Thoughtseize. Does that look good? I like it. Let's go. <coughs> I don't think Duress is where I want to be, because you can't take Grease Fang with Duress, even though it takes their draw spells, just not... It doesn't take the cards that you care the most about. I have the one lander last game, but this one's a lot worse. Because we have to play this on turn one for green, and I have Timber Crown Pathway Elvish Mystic with double Blood Scythe Harvester, so yeah, we gotta ship that one. Maybe the pathways are just bad. I feel like every single hand that's had a pathway has been terrible. I don't know about you, but that's kind of how I feel. Yeah, Walker's the uh, the plan for the Mono Red matchup. I play Elf first. You can easily be forced to help your opponent with duress. Right, exactly. Because they, they don't play a ton of non-creature spells. So if they go, like, say, Stitcher Supplier into Ledger Shredder, right, which is a curve they, they could easily have, and you duress them and oh, their only target is Parhelion, then you just screwed yourself. They discarded Rafine? The disrespect. The pure disrespect. Uh, good news is I don't have to worry about uh, Grease Fang next turn, so I can just do this. Just kind of chill, do some setup. Why do we play no Sanctuary sideboard? Sanctuary? What Sanctuary? Shaper Sanctuary? What matchup would you want Shaper Sanctuary for? I guess Bractos. Okay, they had a second Rafine. It's a little annoying. <laughs> Got the sexiest goose. That is a good goose. The problem with Shaper Sanctuary in a deck like this against Rakdos is a lot of your... Like, you have Obnixilis, which doesn't trigger off Sanctuary when they when they target it. Eh, there's a couple things like that, but maybe it's good. Yeah, maybe it's good. Hmm. I don't actually have a lot going on here. I can go Sack Food, push the Rafine, which I don't have to play an untapped land for, so I guess we'll just pass... I don't know if I should do that main phase. I think they have counter spells in their deck. I'm just going to wait till their turn. <clears throat> Take it easy, JS. Thank you for stopping by, buddy. Hope you have a good night. Thanks for much better in decks that only play creatures like humans. Right, yeah. Yeah, this deck has like some removal spells too, where it's like, yeah. Shredder. Okay. Shredder's fine. They shocked, which leads me to believe they're probably going to cast. Whoa, they have a Lazav? There's a lot of things that I really want to push, but I can't push all of them. What's the text on this card? Becomes a copy of target creature card in your graveyard with mana value X, except the same as Lazav. Uh, so they can just copy Rafine. Kind of sucks. Uh, yeah, so we just go Sack Food, push Rafine, pay the one. Push Rafine, pay the one, take four. Yeah, this is not looking good. They just have too much stuff. They don't really have a lot going on. All right, we'll go to game three. We will simply go to game three. Maybe I have to have the ops in. I feel like I, my, my threat count is kind of low now. I'm still Branchwalker, Blood Tithe, Jade Light, Fable, two obs. I don't know what else I would want to cut, though. Could trim some elves. Maybe, like, trim one elf for a third ob on the play. This ob is a lot better on the play. Let's try that. I think ob's a trap. I mean, again, as we talked about, it is awkward in this matchup because you can let them discard Barhelion, but... Uh, I really don't like reactive hands like this. Fatal Push is not that good against them. It's decent-ish if they have a Shredder draw. I, I probably can't mulligan this hand, but I don't think it's that good. I don't love this hand. But it is lands and spells. I'd like turn three, end of turn or charm, draw a couple cards that way. Mord, thank you for the raid, buddy. Much appreciated. Welcome everybody from Mord Stream. Playing some Pioneer Jund. Reed Duke would be proud. <coughs> Pathways in three colors are rough, and we only play them because we don't have allied fast lands. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just give me Black Leave Cliffs and Copper Line Gorge, and the mana base in this deck would be then be perfect. You know? but we can't have nice things. 
stuck playing Blooming Marsh in a pile of pathways. Element. Chund and Elves Reduck. Yeah, exactly. I love Pioneer too. Pioneer's dope. It's my favorite format for sure. Uh, okay, your turn. Hopefully they play Ledger Shredder this turn so I have a good push target. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for letting me use my mana in an efficient manner. All right, now let's draw Fable. Fable, Fable. It's too easy, chat. It is simply too easy. All right, well, if I'm calling shots, what's the next card I want to draw? Probably Thoughtseize. <laughs> it always works. I don't know if you've seen this stream before, but I'm, I'm very good at call shotting. Very, very good at calling the top card of my deck. Almost every time. Discard Parhelion. No, discard Selfless Spirit. Not quite a Parhelion. All right, I'm going to discard, I think, Land plus Elf. Okay, I got a little punished, but... Hmm. I think I'm going to start hearsing them. I have four cards in hand. Yeah, I kind of want to start hearsing them so they can't cruise. I guess I got punished for discarding that land. I could have discarded Charm, maybe. That might have been better. Kept the land. Because then I could have double-spelled. I'm debating if I want to hearse now or let them cast a cruise. If they cast cruise, they have to tap all of their mana, plus the four cards in their graveyard. I think I'm just going to pass. Because they could hypothetically, like, play Supplier and then into Grease Fang and, and kill me that way, but... I do get a little punished if they have cruise. Can't stay away on Ledger Shredder. Well, that one I will definitely respond to. <clears throat> Why did they shock? Okay, that comes back. So now we can just go play Harvester. Maybe they have a counter spell that's why they shocked? No. I don't know why they shocked. How's the Raksak versus Mono Blue matchup? I think Raksak is favored, but I have lost it a couple of times. I don't think it's like super, super insanely favored, but I would say you're a, you're a decent favorite. Dobin's Veto? They're killing the Harvester and not the Hearse? Uh, sure. That's kind of surprising. Okay. Well, <laughs> they've turned on Revolt, now I can just cast Push. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Let's exile these two. Tap. Uh, they have two cards. Let's just Fable. I'm also not going to attack. I could, but it's just a way to lose this game that I probably can't lose. Yeah, the games that I've lost as Rakdos Sack to Mono Blue are where, like, I don't draw Fatal Push, and they just have one drop into, um, into Curious Obsession. That's, that's kind of, that's pretty much Mono Blue's MO in most matchups, but that's, that's how I felt, like, where they can just kind of Mono Green with a decent drop at the top of the deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the thing, too. Once, once they've established enough mana sources, almost every single card in their deck just kills you on the spot. Karn... Uh, Cavalier drawing a card, all this stuff, Storm the Festival, so it's like, it's really hard to uh, to get to a spot where you, like, actually feel comfortable, you know? <coughs> Rakdos has one bad matchup versus a tier 1.5 deck. I mean, Monogreen's tier 1. 1,000% 1, Monogreen's tier 1. People who say that are, people who say it's not are crazy. Monogreen is the best deck. It's the most powerful deck. It's doing the most broken things. The argument is, are there any decks that can beat Monogreen when it's firing on all cylinders? Um, Boros and, and Mono Blue Spirits can. Boros can just race it pretty easily. I am a big fan of Pirate Heroes. Unfortunately, I have Coligan's Command. I feel like the bad guy here. I guess I just kill the Inspector. I was thinking about making them discard, but I think killing the Inspector is better. I guess that's worse if they have Extraction Specialist. But if I make them discard, they can discard a 2-drop, and then maybe something better than Inspector, and they just get that back, so... I think I'm just going to do it this way. 
Casting a three-color Planeswalker outside of its colors. Yeah, I think I'm... I don't know how many how many uh, Nickel Pulses I'm going to play in the RCQ. I have one, but I kind of want to play two. Uh, okay, so we can go Branchwalker plus Strangle. Definitely want to top a Fatal Push. I can just kill all their stuff and then eventually cast this charm. Track Clue. I think they're also, yeah, they're not playing with Collected Company. Because the Pyre versions don't usually play Collected Company. Okay, that's annoying. So let's go Pathway on Green. Play Elf Attack. Hold up Charm. Slash Push. One my RCQ with two Nickel Bullets, I definitely recommend going two. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go, like, two Bullets. Okay. I didn't know if I wanted to go, like, two Bullets, one... Uh, the other card that I wanted to play was... I wanted to play Main Deck Voracious Hydra, because I think that's one of the better cards you can play in the Mirror Match. Ooh, double Kroxa. Let's go... Red Pathway, right? Red Pathway... Double Crooks of you. Double Crooks. <clears throat> Let me get Escape the Crooks the next turn. What's their last card? They're thinking about something. Okay, Crooks of you. They're at 11. They go to 7. I don't have Fatal Push up this turn. It's a little scary, but... Okay. Uh, I will reveal Stomping Ground. You can have that one. And Super Greedy with two bullets, one Nissan, it worked out. Yeah, basically, I think there's three flex spots, right? It's all four of three flex spots, because there are some crazy people that only play three Kiora. I think that's wrong. I think you should 100% play four Kioras. So it's basically there's three flex spots, and right now I have uh, two bullets, one Voracious Hydra, and then I have two more Hydras in the sideboard. Because I want to board up the three Hydras in the mirror match. Ob Nixilis, huh? They have zero cards. So... I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. I can go green, red, black. Ob, sack, elf, push this. I think that's good, right? And I can even attack before activating Ob. Because they have to chump block, right? So I push this, now they have to chump block, because if they don't, they just die, because they have no cards in hand. And if they do chump block, then I can just go minus plus. Yeah, so they decide to block, because they have to. Yeah, that's fine. Let me go minus, plus, they go to five, we still have Kroxa for next turn. Link at Pioneer, listen, notice Ginger put an Ob in his Reblex Cyborg, and I have no clue what matchup it's for. It's for the grindy matchups. That loves the grindy matchup cards. I mean, the card does seem pretty good, right? It's just a really powerful card. Opponent has conceded from the game. <laughs> yeah, they also love the ASMR. <laughs> Whenever you say a card is for the grindy matchup, it's usually a fun one, so I get it. You know, I understand. All right, our deck is, like, pretty well set up for this matchup. So we're not going to do a ton of changes here. I don't think I want the Wild Growth Walkers. Because they're not, like, pressuring our life total, right? They're more about just grinding us out with Pyre of Heroes. So I don't really think that I want to go towards Wild Growth Walker. This card's horrendous against Reflector Mage. I don't know if I want to cut both of them, but I might. Uh, I kind of like everything else. I'll keep one, though. I kind of like having access to one. I've got a Jade Light on the draw. It's probably fine. I liked Minus Minus, so they would be at three. That way an Extraction Specialist could block to keep them alive. Oh, plus plus. Yeah, I guess that's maybe better. It is nice to have the blocker, or just, like, to have a creature in play, but it might be better to just go plus plus. Maybe that was enough. I want to go see these guys live again. They put on such a good show. <coughs> People just don't play as much on Moto as they do in paper. What, Mono Green? Yeah, I agreed. There's there's not nearly as much mono green online as there is in paper. Like if you look at the if you look at the top 32 from the challenges, there's really not that much green, but like every single RCQ that I've been to has been like at least 3 to 4 mono green in the top 8. So, how I'm feeling about Pioneer lately. I love it. I think Pioneer's awesome. Two guys from Great Guard. 
Dead Eye Tracker explores. Bro, we're exploring? We're actually exploring? Okay. Cool with that. Yeah, I've, I've been loving Pioneer, though. I think it's my favorite my favorite format, for sure. <clears throat> I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily say that I've lost interest in Modern. It's just... I don't know. I just... I don't enjoy the games that much. Okay, not bad. So we can go play this as a Black Source... Or red. Is it better to have multiple red or multiple black? Probably multiple red, right? Because I have Strangle plus Harvester. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -mm. I think less monogram because of the timer. Maybe. It does take a while to kill, and at least in paper you can, like, explain... Once you've set up the infinite loop, you can just explain it to your opponent, so you don't actually have to, like, go through the motions and stuff. Scheming Fence. Cannot activate my abilities of Blood Tithe Harvester. So I can just go... Strangle the Scheming Fence, kill the Lieutenant, play Elf, I think. Let's go Strangle that, kill that, play Elf. And then I think maybe just loot the Blood Tithe Harvester away. Pioneer best format right now. Yeah, I'm with Code Diamonds on that. I've been enjoying Pioneer so, so much. Just feels like the, the games are so much more interesting. Okay, that's a little annoying. Get back Scheming Fence. Get back Lieutenant. Okay, that's fine. Question is, do I cash in the Blood Token? So this is Sacrificer, the highest mana value. So they would sack this. Um, just don't know if I want to keep this Blood Tithe Harvester. I kind of want to, because if I draw land, I can go Harvester plus... Oh, I actually can't go Harvester plus Charm, because I have two green sources. Yeah, I guess at that point I'll discard the Harvester. Okay, a little awkward. Uh, let's just go Blooming Marsh Pass. With the intention of casting the Riveteer's Charm this turn, just to kill the, the Specialist. Any testing with Mono White Humans, is it viable? I haven't played I've I've been played a little bit of black white humans. I haven't really played a lot of mono white humans though. I think the mono white deck is kind of bad against Rakdos mid-range. I mean, whatever humans deck you play is going to be not great against the Rakdos mid-range deck, but I just feel like the Bant deck playing Collected Company has a little bit more like they have more power against the Rakdos deck because they have Collected Company, so they have maybe a better shot at just, like, out, like, you know, outpacing the Rakdos removal spells. Bro, we're in the club? We're in the club, chat. We are in the club. We club it. They have one card in hand? Um, I'm gonna get a little greedy here. This might be a little too greedy, but, yeah, a little too greedy. Because now I can't kill the clubber. Although, what 4-drop can they really get? I guess they can get the one that gets back a thing. The 4 made a 3-3 that gets back a homie. <clears throat> Might have been too greedy to not just cast Dreadbore there. I thought, I was trying to hit a land, obviously. Oh my god, they can cast the Jade Light Ranger too? That's gross. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not fair. I call bullshit. I call bullshit. Oh, they even milled a blood soak champion? Bro. Stop it. Okay. What are the odds they have a five mana human in their deck? Pretty unlikely, right? Pretty unlikely they have a five mana human in their deck. Just wondering if I want to cast the Dread Boar. I'm just going to save it. Very likely. What five mana human would they even have? <laughs> like, I don't think they usually go up to five. Cloud Blazer? Bro, if I get Cloud Blazer, they wanted it more. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> they just want it more if they have Cloud Blazer. They're just gonna sack Mage. Yeah. Do they have another Hostage Taker? Oh my god. Yeah, we're super dead. They have Westfield Abbey too? Kind of loosen their mana base, but... I mean, I'm with it. It's a powerful card. Probably a little rough on their mana, though. Uh, yeah, let's just go to game three. It's a lot harder when we don't have Coligan's Command for Pyre. Kenrith? Oh, I guess they could play Kenrith, yeah. 
They definitely wanted it more. That's what I'm saying. All right, don't let them have Pyre as, as we're going to try as hard as possible. I mean, we couldn't really do anything about it that game. We didn't draw Thoughtseize for a cold against Command, but... Chat, the sub count's going down. I'm just saying, if y'all got any Twitch Primes, you know where I'm going with that. I don't need to finish that sentence. No black mana, huh? Got Branchwalker, though. Do we keep? You got like two shots at a black source. It's a little risky. All right, let's try it. YOLO. Distinction. There it is. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Much appreciated. If you got gifted a sub from Distinction, be sure to thank them in the chat. And if you didn't, let me type. I want, if, you, if you didn't get a sub, dodge. That's what I was trying to say. Keska, I'll, I'll wait for that until they go. All right, we got Keska with the five months and Jay Stampy with the prime. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I guess I got to top that. And that'll try and find me a black source. Mm, thank you, thank you, thank you for the subs. Distinction with the five, Keska with the five. Five months, resub five months, and then Jay Stampy with the prime. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jade Light, black source, black source, black source, please. Well, shit. Maybe I should have mulliganed. <laughs> if only I maybe should have mulliganed. I wonder if Explore will ever come back as a mechanic. It's a sweet mechanic. I hope so. Get a Reflector Mage by Lenore Elves. Feels bad, man. The Jade Light. Weird champ. I'm at 10. Okay, I guess we're going to play some defense. Uh, I think I'm supposed to Coligan's Command the Lieutenant. And then try to trade for the Reflector Mage. Maybe Dreadbore is better. I don't think you can mull that hand. I, it's just so powerful, right? Like, if I hit the, if I hit it, it's so nice. It's definitely risky. I'm not going to tell you it's not risky, but... <sighs> Club... All right, discard, two damage. So then we tr we have to trade for the champion. Yeah, we kind of have to trade. We can't take it. So they kill the elf, minus one here. We trade this, go to six. Next turn, I guess we maybe just play Harvester. Hopefully I draw Strangle. I think Strangle will be is my best draw. Because Strangle, I guess Elf would let me double spell too, but Strangle would let me go removal spell plus Harvester, and that's a way to, like, swing the tempo back in my favor. I thought the hand was fine. I, I think it was pretty close, but... Again, I think if I hit a Black Source in the first, like, the first two hits, I'm a pretty big favorite, but... Unfortunate. Explore is a good mechanic, and they can make slightly more powerful card with Explore in the future. Yeah, it's like... You know what I really like about Explore? I like the Explore payoffs. Specifically Wild Growth Walker. That card's so sweet. All right, so I got a six. Play land. Okay. Uh, I don't think I can afford the shock to play the object or to play the jade light. So I probably should just kill a creature, play a tap land, go to four, and the next turn hopefully go jade light harvester. I think that's my best outcome. Okay. Go to three. Sure. Okay, that kind of plays. So we can go Jade Light, Trigger. Not exactly what I wanted to hit, because I wanted to try and get the Jade Light to be able to trade for something. I guess if they don't have a human, which is very unlikely, I can go trade here, trade here, go to one. Very, very unlikely. Okay. Not technically dead. Oh, no, I am dead, right? Block, block, take three. All right, you win. Yeah, unfortunate. I, maybe I should have mulliganed. I, again, I think if I draw Black Source, I win that game very easily, but yeah, just unfortunate. Maybe should have mulliganed. They didn't empty the Explorer concept by making cards that were too no play outside of it because you have to build your entire deck around it. And sometimes that works out, but not always. Mustasabi's playing it out at 03. Oh, God, what's Mustasabi on today? Playing it out at 03, huh? The hero we deserve.
We had a long discussion about Abundant Growth versus Arkham's Ashley recently. It was interesting. Yeah, I mean, they're... Honestly, those two cards are not that far off of each other. I'm going to be completely honest with you. They're really not that far away from each other. Did you know that card is, is uh, 50 tickets, Ventus? 50 tickets. Bro, you're 0-3 with Devotion. You're still playing? Why? Just drop. Just, just, just new league. It's simply that easy. You can just join a new league. Uh, I think I'm going to play Jade Light Ranger. Graveyard. Maybe that was a bad play, because I don't have a red source left over. Uh, now I do. I think I'm just going to ob here. Ob sack the ranger. Because I can go goose, land, sack the ranger. I think I like that. Because my Jade Light Ranger is probably not going to be that great next turn if they play an old growth troll, which I assume they probably have. Don't worry, they'll tell you they're buying more. Yeah, they always do. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Musasabi, what you got for me, buddy? Attack you for three. <clears throat> it had to be an extremely low draft to set on Moto. It sucked in its arena set. What set is uh, is Trespasser from? It's from Innistrad, right? There's like a lot of other random Innistrad cards that are also super expensive. I think I'm gonna down tick both for now. Although, if they play Old Growth Troll, down ticking both is kind of bad. Because I don't really want to attack into the troll, anyways. So maybe it's just better to just plus, 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 plus. Just keep. It's infinite plus. Because I don't care about the life. I don't care about the two life that I gain. Hmm. Well, now we're plusing. Guess I could try to push the troll, but that seems kind of bad. Uh, let's go Stomping Ground Kroxa. We know about Nykthos, which they're probably not going to discard. God, it's, it just sucks that this card can just come back. Maybe it's good to just push the troll, get a little bit of damage in. I actually think I might just do that. It looks bad because they can just enchant one of their lands and they get their up mana, but like it does push a little bit of damage and it protects my obs, which is worth two more damage next turn. So like this play looks bad and it's not great, but do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. I mean, I guess that's what the equivalent of shocking them, which is not the best play. Mm -mm. Six mana, second storm. No, oh, Kev. Yeah, this is rough. I knew this matchup was going to be horrible if we played it, but I did not expect to play against Musasabi playing this in the 0-3 bracket. Uh, I also, I can't even get the Kroxa back, right? I can bid an Obnixilis, but I'm still one card short. So, I guess we go... <sighs> even if I Kroxa their last card, they still have Storm the Festival, so it doesn't really matter. So I have to hope they brick. Your turn. Surely they'll brick. Yeah, like Dead of the Bugbear is also like 56 tickets. It's crazy. Fable the Mirror Breaker is like 40. All right, please miss. Simply just miss. That is definitely not a miss. Yeah, hers too. Hers is almost 50. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Chess scoop. This is where they, like, tank for five minutes on the best possible play, even though it, like, doesn't really matter what they do. They could click cards at random, but I still can't win. They chose Pithing Needle. That can't be correct. Uh, I guess maybe. Couldn't they have just got Boat and killed an Ob anyways? Why wouldn't they just get Boat there? Doesn't make any sense. Like, Boat kind of accomplishes the same thing, but it also just puts a fucking Boat to play, right? I don't know, that's weird. <sighs> yeah, apparently they knew I was going to draw the second ob. <laughs> uh, I can put the Croaks into play. I have to basically sacrifice my entire board to do it, but... Uh, right, I have enough mana. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, let's go play this as a black source. Red, black, green. <laughs> this is not going to be pretty, chat, so look away. 
I could have sacked the devil to ping the Karn for one, but I don't know how relevant that is. All right, Crooks are you. The last card was a second Karn, so I guess that makes a little bit more sense. No, still, yeah, I guess maybe, because they wanted to just get the needle, and they could just get the boat with this, but... Mm -mm -mm. I realize that isn't even the Kiora, because the other the Planeswalkers can fill that role. It's the Nekthos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Attack both Karn. Karn would go to... Oh, yeah, I could have maybe... Mm. Yeah, I maybe should have attacked both with Karn. I didn't think about that. Because then Karn takes one trigger, Karn takes another one, it goes to one, and then they can't minus. Yeah, that was probably just better. Yeah, you're right. Now they have Pestilent Cauldron. I mean, where, who are we kidding? We can't win this game. I'm just going to stop wasting all of our time. <sighs> Look, the Mono Green play experience is not very good. I kind of hate it, but I don't love this card against them because it just so it's so bad against Karn. Uh, I keep Strangle. Probably want to keep Proxa. I'm gonna keep Push. Cold against Command's good against Boat. Uh, I gotta cut four more cards though. We don't want Duress. I mean, I think you have to bring in Thoughtseize against them, right? We would if we attack both Karn there. Yeah, maybe. <clears throat> You're probably right. Charm's kind of slow to get the charms. This also is sacrifice, right? Yeah, so they just get to... Oh, but it is Planeswalker. Dude, I don't know what I want to cut. I don't know. Fable's slow? Yeah, that's a... maybe Fable is too slow. We could try that. Just be a little bit leaner. Yeah, alright, I'm down with it. Just cut all our three drops, no big deal. <laughs> Eh, make the curve a little bit better. Play first. Okay, this end looks good. Lead on Elf, and then we can go... Funnily enough, we can't actually go Harvester plus Thoughtseize on two, because Elf only taps for green, but... The mana base is so awkward in this deck. Because I have to play this as a red source, right? I have to, I think. Yeah, mana base is super awkward. If only I had Copperline Gorge. But I guess Copperline Gorge wouldn't be a black source, so... Maybe that's a wash. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I have the Thoughtseize. Cav, Mystic, Karn, Oath, Storm... Uh, what if I just take Oath? Is that bad? I take Oath and they just play Karn. But if they Karn minus, I can kill it with the Coligan's Command. I'm just going to YOLO and take Oath. It's probably not the best play, but I'm kind of tilted, so fuck it. <coughs> Any mana confluences? Nah, maybe they should be, though. This is their three cards. Still don't have a second fucking black mana. So if I go Shock Elf, make them discard, they discard Storm. Rip land, play Cav, can't possibly win, but I can't beat Cav anyways, so... Uh... Guess I could just push Elf and save Colgan's Man for the boat, which is probably better. Yeah. Yeah, save the K Command for a boat. I'm just really tilted. <laughs> If you couldn't tell. Sure. Perfect draw step. I think I'm more tilted that Musasabi is still playing at 0-3 with, like, with Mono Green. I, I could see if you're playing at 0-3 with, like, you know, a cool deck, but, like, this is boring as shit. Why are you playing at 0-3 with, with this? Like, I don't understand. Just drop and join a new league. I don't, like, why would you keep playing at 0-3? With, with Mono Green, I just don't understand it. Stack needs more black mana sources. There's like 16. 
Better question, how are you O3 with Mono Green? Yeah, that's a good question, too. How do you lose three matches with this deck? <clears throat> yeah, you win. I, I quit. <laughs> I just, I don't give a shit, dude. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's try not to 1-4 to at least get our 50 play points back. I'm going to keep this hand. This hand has turn 1 Strangle, turn 2 Blood Scythe Harvester. It seems fine. Don't really want to strangle that thing. So I guess I won't. Just draw, like, multiple 1-mana removal spells against the only card in the format that I don't want to kill on turn 1. I still think I'm going to hold up Fatal Push here in case they play, like, a 2-drop that I want to kill. I guess there's not that many two drops that I would want to kill, but I mean, if they cast Informant, I'll probably just kill it. <clears throat> Must be near Dallas because you wouldn't hit, you wouldn't like the Cowboys unless I live there. No, I'm in Massachusetts. <laughs> I am in Massachusetts. Been a Cowboys fan uh, pretty much my whole life as long as I can remember. So they have Salvage. Well, I'm just gonna tap out and hope they don't have it. Not really a lot I can do. Cowboys always lose. Well, when I started watching them, back in my day, when I started watching them, this was like during the uh, Troy Aikman era, when they were actually still good. And it's been a long time since that era. <coughs> I had to live through the uh, the Tony Rombo muffed, uh, muffed snap. Uh, that was like the worst moment of my life. That was so bad. I don't know if y'all remember that. Why is Graveyard Trespasser so expensive on Mono? I don't really know. We were talking about that. I, I guess because people just didn't draft that set, but... See, that's really awkward, because that that turns off my Revolt Trigger on their turn. Very smart of them to, to kill the token. Because now I can't turn on push on their turn. Oh, uh, this is really, really bad. So what are my options here? I can go Obnixilis, but if they have Parhelion in hand, that's pretty bad. Uh, same with Kroxa. These don't really do anything, so I guess I just play a Harvester. I don't really want to attack either, because that gives them more looks at support. That gives them more looks at Parhelion, so. I don't really have any options. No, it's just like it, it's a very obvious play. Like, what else are they gonna do with their command anyways? You know? Are they going to drain me for two? It's way more important to kill the blood so I can't push. Like, it's very likely that I have push in my deck, right? <coughs> I think maybe they brought all the key cards for popular archetypes so you can get lower mana traders bundle. <laughs> Classic tin foil hat. I still remember where I was watching that game. Such a great memory. <sighs> I guess we can't be friends then. I have to trade for the Chariot and then push the Grease Fang and then just can't ever beat three two twos. Nope, just gonna take it. <clears throat> now they just get to pick up the Chariot though. Maybe I should have traded. Trade here, sack this, push the Grease Fang, but then I just, again, I just can't really beat the three two twos. Um, And they have Can't Stay Away 2. So if I were to do something like main phase kill cat token, main phase kill cat token, push the Grease Fang, then they can just go can't stay away the Grease Fang. But I guess they don't have another artifact in their graveyard to be able to get back. I could also go... I guess I could go Blood Tithe Harvester, sack kill Grease Fang, because I get the extra blood token, and then play this untap to hold up push... I guess that's not horrible. It's probably better than most of my other lines, right? Kill the Grease Fang, Shock, go. <clears throat> that's why Abzan Fang is better. Yeah, I, I like the Abzan deck a lot. Like, the Esper version doesn't get to play this stuff, you know? Like, they're just gonna very easily win this game with... with they're just gonna solo me with Chariot, basically. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get solo by Cherry, essentially. Mm -mm -mm. The tinfoil stops them from reading our minds. Sure about that? You sure about that? 
Yeah, Chariot also just makes Graveyard Hate look pretty embarrassing. You know, if your opponent loads up on, like, hearses and rest in pieces and all this stuff, you're just like, okay, get your cast Chariot. Can you beat it? And most people just can't beat it. <laughs> like, if you don't kill it on the spot, you're probably going to die to it. Like, now I have to trade... Wait, they didn't attack? They should have 100% attacked. But that trade's so bad for me. Why didn't they attack? I don't really, I don't really get that no attack, but... Uh, Alright, let's discard Kroxa. <clears throat> Gilded Goose, huh? Yeah, this is just not happening. Alright, let's go Branch Walker. Still have to hold up Fatal Bush. <sighs> this is so bad. Can, like, sack two Harvesters to kill two Cat Tokens, then hold up, you know, this plus Push. Which I guess is fine, but... Doesn't really get me anywhere. But I think it's better than just dying to these Tokens. I mean, I guess the theory is the trade's going to happen regardless, so what's the point of doing this, but... But yeah, I think I still have to hold up Bush. Stacking is the same as blocking. Well, maybe, but like, what if they have a removal spell? You know? I don't know. I guess they probably don't play Push main deck. But that's like the... That's the argument for sacking. It's like, if I'm just going to trade anyways, then, you know... Slightly better, because they... I'm forcing the trade, whereas like... You know what I mean? They can just choose to not attack or something. Why would they discard instead of just casting? Uh, this, I guess. Yeah, they could have just cast the Chariot. Because they don't have a Parhelion anyways. Why don't they just cast the Chariot? I guess they probably have a second Chariot, but... Mm -mm 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 -mm. Take four, go to seven. Why isn't L-O-F-V played? Lay out of the Veil is not legal in Pioneer. How do I possibly win this game? I don't really know. I don't really have a good plan. I don't really have a good plan. We're just giving them infinite time, too. <clears throat> Oh, Leyline of the Void. No, people don't... Like, the thing about Leyline is the Rakdos midrange deck is much more interested in playing a longer game. Like, I think Leyline of the Void is good in decks where you're trying to end the game quickly. Um, but because, like, the most the most played black deck is just a midrange deck, I think they're much more interested in playing something like Unlicensed Terrace. I guess the argument for playing Leyline is you can pitch extra copies to Fable, which is kind of cool. So, like, there definitely is a good argument to play Leyline, but I don't know. Okay, let's bring in Hearse. Cut Strangle. Strangle's pretty bad. Croaks is pretty bad. Ob's pretty bad. We played this matchup before. Uh, we wanted Thoughtseize. We had to keep in two of these cards. I don't really want to keep in any of these cards, because they're all kind of medium... I guess two obs. It's like the least bad card, but it's still not that good. It's really hard to like reliably fire off one of those because your opponent could just discard a Parhelion. Uh, okay, we can go put back Jade Light. Turn one Thoughtseize. Turn two Branch Walker. Turn three Fable. I will take Grease Fang. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What's wrong with whatnot? Mm, does this just play Rotting Regisaur? The my deck no. Oh, you're asking because of the uh, the Obnix list. No, there's actually funny you mention that though because I'll show you in a second after my opponent lets my Branch Walker resolve. Surely any day they will hit the F6 button. Mm -mm -mm. Any day they will hit the F6 button. Cool. Um, but this is what we were talking about earlier. This is a deck that I played about a month ago, where it's playing like four obs, four Regisaurs, and it's like a Rakdos beatdown deck with like Net of the Ebon Legion, Kumano, and then you're an Obosh deck. So this is like this was this deck was kind of sweet. I want to work on that more. Okay, so one, two, three, four. They played Blooming Marsh, Courtyard, Wayfinder. So they have these four cards. Mm -mm -mm. They have no artifacts in the graveyard. 
And we know they have Informant, Takanuma, Chariot, Temple Garden. I guess I just go Fable. I was thinking about playing Ob this turn. I'm not going to trade, though. Because I'm probably going to end up sacking the Branch Walker to Ob. But... Mm -mm 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 -mm. The best hand I've had this league? Yeah, for sure. Can we please just have Blackleaf, Glyphs, and Pioneer? Some Copperline Gorge action? There's a lot of decks that really, really want Seachrome Coast, too. Just saying. Okay, second Fatal Push. Let's actually just discard the AWB. I really don't want to AWB them. They discarded Parhelion. They played the Informant, played the Temple Garden, so they have these two in hand. I guess this Chariot's kind of gonna be kind of hard to beat, huh? And they just have, like, random shitters that can trade. Okay, what if I go push Informant, attack maybe with both? Yeah, attack with both, get the treasure, and then we can use the treasure to play Harvester if they have Grease Fang. They just didn't block. Cool with that. Mm -mm. Trying to test the new deck for Dota decks in Modern, so hard to come up with something different than the meta. I know, it's really rough. You come up with some sweet decks, Owl Knight. I will say that I, I'm a big, big fan of the of the decks that you submit. They did go for it. Means they probably don't have a land. Oh no, we know they have Takanuma. Why didn't they just play Chariot? It's like pretty obvious that I'd push, right? Like I would never push the 3 2 if I didn't have the push. I guess they might just have another one, anyways. Because they didn't play Takanuma. Uh, well, I guess that sucks. So we should probably. I should probably loot here, try and find Thoughtseize. Ding, ding, ding. Show me that second Grease Fang. Oh, can't stay away. Okay. Well, now we have to somehow slog through these chariots, which is not easy, but... Okay, attack. Don't really care if they trade. Either way, I'll be coming up with something. I'll submit something soon off for the night. Take it easy all night. Thank you for stopping by, bunny. Hope you have a good night. Yeah, they did trade. Makes sense. They can get back Reese Fang with Takanuma. Yeah, I know, but like, I'm, what I'm saying is that I think that they should have correctly identified that I had a Fatal Push, and maybe should have just played Chariot last turn instead of going for it. But again, now we have to somehow beat the Chariot, which is not that easy. Hmm. And they're at nine. I guess what I can do is copy the Harvester, sack the copy to kill a cat token, and then play second Fable. Yeah. I think that's my plan. So let's go copy Harvester. <clears throat> sack the copy, kill the cat token. And then they can Oh, but this just this just loses to the to the to this, right? They just can't stay away the Grease Fang. I guess I'm gonna one. I mean, I don't think I have any outs, but... I guess I could Blood Token. So I guess I could go Sack the Copy, Kill a Cat Token, and then maybe Loot with the Blood to try and find... something? Because otherwise I'm dead. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, which is probably why I have to try and find something. Push does it. Uh, That, unfortunately, doesn't do it. Or, no, it does, right? Because if they go Grease Fang, tap the Grease Fang. Uh, if they're smart, they can go respond to Charm, crew with Chariot, sack the Chariot. Or wait, no, this is fine, right? Because if I Charm them, if they crew the Chariot, they sack the Chariot, but then they don't have a thing to crew the, the, the thing, right? Oh yeah, or I could just, you know, exile the graveyard. <laughs> yeah, that's also a thing. I forgot that it had that ability. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can just do that. That probably works, too. <laughs> I haven't played with that card yet, man. <laughs> I'm, like, trying to find this convoluted line, and it's like, oh, yeah, I can just exile the graveyard. That works, too. Might as well get them to spend five mana on it, though, right? Because that means they're not playing Cherry. It, it basically just time walks them, which is kind of gas. Yeah, this is a blowout. It's a blowout, too, because they also can't crew. So now I can just go copy Harvester again, kill the other cat token. They don't have a blocker this turn. 
Yeah, this is a massive blowout. That's like, that's about as bad as it possibly could have gone for them. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> are you up or are you up for this? I think I should loot now because Strangle kills them. Or actually, no, I boarded out Strangle, right? Yeah, so push kills them, though. So I could tap the pathway. Six, eight. Yeah, because if I tap the pathway, find push, cast push, tack for nine. Oh, but now I can't kill the cat token. Right. Hmm. Okay, maybe this was bad. I mean, it is greedy. Like, I would have killed them if I found push, right? Maybe it's just, like, I'm playing towards a two-outer, which is probably not that great. <coughs> kill first. Chat, I don't have lethal if I kill first. Let's put some to three. But I guess now they can just play the second chariot. They're still dead to a removal spell, though, right? Just any removal spell. Like, I know I could have sacrificed the harvester, but again, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had lethal if I did. <coughs> I realized that line was an option. How backed up is the line for Dota decks? Uh, I think this is the end of the line, pretty much. I have one scheduled for next week. Oh, no, I have two scheduled for next week. So next week is full. This will be the week after next week. Would I have chat lethal? Yeah, probably. You threw me the harvester this way, now you don't have any repeated removal with the reflection. Yeah, that is true. Because now I, like, forced the trade. That's a good point, too. It's fine. We'll just draw Colgan's command. That one is not particularly good. I'll cast it, but don't really have good attacks now. But they have to be a little bit careful with their attacks, right? They can't get they can't get too aggressive because I can end of turn make a creature, and I can also crew the hearse potentially. So, question: If I copy a hearse, it's it's a zero zero, right? Yeah, it's a zero zero. I answered my own question. Abrupt decay. Uh, Mm, 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 mm. The copy would not be a creature. Really? Oh, but I would lose at the end of turn anyways, right? Yeah, so it wouldn't matter. Copy would be an uncrewed hearse with no cards under it. Yeah, but it still dies in the turn, right? Okay. So can they attack? I don't think they can, right? No, they can't attack. I think cannot attack. Okay, uh, now I can copy the Branch Walker, right? All right, they just conceded. I don't think they were dead, but whatever. Game three, similar to copying Den Hive. Yeah. So if you copy Den Hive, do you lose the land end of turn? So I know that it comes into play tapped as a copy of, it comes into play as a tapped land, but does it die end of turn? It still does, right? I think it does. I learned this lesson the hard way trying to copy a Hallstorm Giants. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this hand looks pretty good, right? Vatsy's Blood Scythe Harvester, Riveteer's Charm. I mean, double ob's kind of rough, but I'll try it. Let's go. <clears throat> yeah, so it just does nothing because you don't get to attack with it. It comes into play taps. So you can't even use it for mana, and it still dies in the turn, so it does nothing. I guess you can end of turn make a copy of it. Like you can go, you can go tap four mana on your opponent's end step. Tap four mana, crew my land or animate my land, then activate the fable to make a copy of it. I guess hypothetically it could come up, but what's up, Ashiok? Don't want to hear a banger. Of course I do. They took my thought seeds. That's rude. What do we got? All right, I'm just gonna skip. Dead Bundy. Chat, what do you think? Is this a banger? I like it so far. Yeah, your music... I, I don't really care about your opinion, Brad, though. Chorus is insane. It sounds decent so far. What'd they do? Playing Grease Fang. Okay. They draw the land. Um, Surely I can't just play Jade Light Ranger, right? <laughs> That's a little loose. Uh, Okay, let's go... I have four cards in hand. I 
Hmm, I think I just want a main phase Riveteer's Charm. I mean, I could also just attack, right? They're not going to block. And if they do block, then I can play the Jade Light Ranger. Right? Yeah, they didn't block. I'm, I'm going to play a little bit scared here. I'm just going to hold up all my cards. Like, with as long as I have both of these up, there's no way they can set up a Grease Fang. So, Ashiok got scammed. What do you mean he got scammed? Can I turn it up? Bro, it's pretty loud. Turn up your volume, man. Chat, is it, like, also low on all you guys'? It's, like, almost all the way up, man. I can't even turn it up that much more. You have me on max? Well, I don't know. You guys can't hear it? All right, fine. It's pretty low. There, how's that? Better? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Not bad. Okay. Uh, what do I want to do this turn? Hmm. They have three cards. If I cast Riveteer's Charm, they sacrifice the Grease Fang. Oh no, if I cast Riveteer's Charm, they just crew and sack this. Okay, so I'll just take this. I'll go end of turn, shock a cat, and then shatter the chariot. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cast the Colgan's command. So let's go destroy two damage. It's kinda like a one for one, sort of. I have to answer the cat, but. Uh, more three drops, just what I'm looking for. Okay, they have three cards. How likely is it they can set up... Eh, it's pretty likely, right, if I don't kill the Grease Fang. I'm trying to think if I just want to play Fable or Jade Light and Prey. I don't know if I do that, they just get back the Chariot. Okay, okay, okay. So I have to cast... I have to exile their graveyard this turn, probably. Because if I make them sack the Grease Fang, then they could have Can't Stay Away, which is pretty bad. Hmm. Yeah, now I have to exile their graveyard. But the issue with this is if they have something like... Oh, no, I can just wait till they go to combat and then exile their graveyard. Yeah, I can wait till the trigger's in the stack. It's sacrifice? No, I'm saying exile their graveyard. So the problem with 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 casting... So if I, before go to... In main phase one, if I cast... If I make them sacrifice the Grease Fang now, then they could just have another Grease Fang or can't stay away, right? So that's bad. If I just let them go to combat, put the trigger on the stack, then I can exile the graveyard in response, right? So I'm going to do it that way. I mean, the issue with this line is it doesn't answer the Grease Fang problem, so this is much less... This is much more of a temporary solution, but... Oh, okay, I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. Too many three drops. At 14. Could block, but probably shouldn't block. I need to find, like, a Thoughtseize here. Okay. Another Chariot. It's not good. Not good. Uh, now I kind of have to play Jade Light, because I need something to trade for the Chariot. Kind of have to top that. Doesn't feel very good, but... <clears throat> this game's probably over. It sucks. Feels Batman. Too many three drops. Who could have seen this coming? Nobody could have seen this coming. Grizzly Salvage. No Brahelion. Okay. Alright, we're dead. We are dead. Right. We had a, we had a decent run. And by that I mean uh that was kind of miserable. <laughs> I don't know. Deck was like interesting but i don't know we we also never got to bring in these to like actually see how good the green cards were because i think this is part of the biggest reason one of the bigger reasons to play green um so yeah the initial concept was try to make the jun deck a little less clunky by playing mana dorks but the problem is we added more three drops so like the games where we didn't have an elf we just got even more clogged on threes because well, we're, just, we're just playing more threes than, than Black Red is. So it's like we didn't find enough of the branch walkers. Honestly, I think maybe this approach is, is fine, but just don't play Jade Light Ranger. But at that point, you probably don't want to play Walker in the sideboard. But like branch walker and the elves were OK, but yeah, I don't know. Mm.
I also don't know that Obnixilis is that great in this format right now. Like, it's it's a fine card, but we did play against Greasefang twice, and it's like, this card is so bad against Greasefang, you never want to uptick it against them. I think if you're doing that, you play Alpha Main Deck and then cut, and then cut up because the card is dirt. Yeah, Obnixilis, I've, I've really not been super high on Obnixilis. There's just so many decks that don't care about it. Like, it's bad against Phoenix, because they just discard Phoenix. It's atrocious against Greasefang. It's, like, actively bad against them. You never want to plus it. Um, there's just so many decks that interact with the graveyard to the point where you're making your opponent discard a card is a benefit for them less so than it is for you. So, yeah, Obnixil is just not that great. Um, but, yeah, if you just, like, cut the obs and main deck the walkers, that makes the curve better. Might not be that might be a good start, you know. I like Riveteer's Charm, that card's good. Mana base needs some work. I don't know how much you can really fix the mana base without the additional uh the fast lands though. But because we're playing four Blooming Marsh and we're playing four Tomb, four Stomping Ground. I guess we could play more Blood Crips, but I don't know. Illinix is good against Zergrid Black and Blue White. Yeah, it's like it's obviously at its best against Blue White. It's it's like fine against Rakdos, but they still have they still have Crooks to, to discard too. So it's good, but it's not that good. Sean Bruno, thank you for the eighteen. Um, uh, but yeah, those are my thoughts. Obnixil is bad. Jade Light medium. Riveteer's Charm good. Mana Dork's good. Branch Walker good. Like, I do like Fable with Branch Walker and Jade Light. That stuff is kind of cool. But, yeah, Ob's bad. That's pretty much it. It's only... Ha 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 